Uh, I am Karim Mahmoud, the lecturer of cardiology at Cairo University. And this is the Egyptian Society of Cardiology review course, the Advanced Forum. Our subject today is the lipid lowering therapy evidence from clinical trials. If we look to the hierarchy of research design and scientific evidence, we start from the animal and laboratory studies, going up into case reports or case series, and then case control study and cohort study as observational study. And when we uh, want to achieve a better uh, evidence, uh, we do randomized control trial. And after randomized control trial, we do a meta-analysis for this randomized control trial, ending with the statement guidelines uh, that we all know uh, deal with in the clinical practice. And regarding statin, uh, we have a lot of evidence that based on randomized control trial and meta-analysis as we will discuss today. So first, let's flash back to the early statin uh, uh, trials that uh, started back from 1995. And if we look to the, this meta-analysis at 2010, which is cholesterol treatment trialist, that included a 26 randomized trial. This randomized trial have more than 170,000 patients. And uh, these uh, trials uh, um, uh, were um, two parts. The first part is the statin versus control trial, which were 21 trials. Here are examples for these trials, such as the health protection study, which is HPS, that included more than 20,000 patients. Jupiter trial that included more than 17,000 patients. All had LLA and ASCOT LLA that included more than 10,000 patients. Other trials such as Westcops, AFC, ABS, Libid, Prosper, Mega included from 5,000 to 10,000 patients. And the rest of trials such as the large 4S trial included from 1,000 to 5,000 patients. So, as you can appreciate it, all these trials have a considerable number of patients. There is also five trials uh, that included in uh, this meta-analysis and comparing more statin versus less statin, such as search trial with more than 12,000 patients, TNT trial with more than 10,000 patients, ideal trial with more than 8,000 patients, and AZ and prove it trials. So before uh, summarizing the result of this large meta-analysis, let's dive into the trials of the statin that started back uh, from 1995, comparing the statin with a placebo with Woscop's trial. Woscop's trial was uh, a larger trial comparing the bravastatin 40 milligram versus placebo in patients with a large, uh, a high total cholesterol and LDL. This trial uh, showed the superiority of bravastatin over placebo regarding the non-fatal MI and death from coronary artery disease. Actually, this trial have a long follow-up for 20 years that we will mention later and showed the persistent benefit of statin over this large, long duration. Again, when this uh, molecule, which is a bravastatin-40, uh, compared to a placebo in the all hat LLT trial, uh, he, uh, this molecule uh, didn't achieve benefit, probably because it's tested in uh, a lower LDL uh, value uh, and uh, it showed non-significant difference between the bravastatin-40 versus the placebo regarding the all-cause mortality and the composite of the coronary artery disease death and non-fatal myocardial infarction. So bravastatin was mainly beneficial in patients with a high LDL and total cholesterol values. However, 
There is another molecule that introduced uh, with this uh, trial at 2012 uh, and 2002, which is a same 40 that compared with a placebo in about 20,000 patients. And it showed uh, a superiority of a simvastatin regarding the old type of mortality. We are talking about the old cause mortality, the cardiovascular death, and the coronary heart disease death. Moving forward to uh, this trial that published in 2003, which is the ASCOT LLA trial, comparing atorvastatin 10 milligram versus placebo. And this was a primary prevention trial mainly. The atorvastatin was superior uh, uh, to placebo regarding reduction of the major adverse cardiac event. And another molecule, which is a resuvastatin 20 milligram, was tried in, uh, in the Jupiter trial and showed the superiority of the resuvastatin over placebo. The follow-up uh, duration in this trial was short, about two years. However, it showed a benefit over placebo. And this benefit was more pronounced in patients with LDL less than 70 milligram per deciliter. So here is another aspect. If we go with the LDL uh, lower, we can achieve a better benefit with statin. And here is the 20 year follow up of the Scopes trial that uh, mentioned earlier with bravastatin versus placebo and the bravastatin continue to uh, achieve benefit over placebo on a long term follow up. So the, these were the trials of statin versus placebo. And in, we have also a trial of the more dose of statin versus the lesser less dose of statin. This is a, a search trial with 12,000 patients comparing the semvastatin 80 milligram versus a 20 milligram semvastatin. The semvastatin 80 milligram achieved uh, a non-significant decrease in the cardiovascular uh, events. However, it was associated, of course, with a side effect such as elevation of cardiac enzymes and uh, myopathy. And the uh, myopathy increase was significant in this trial. And uh, this discourage, uh, discourages the use of the semvastatin uh, 80 milligram uh, in uh, clinical practice. Uh, another trial, which is TNT trial, comparing atorvastatin 80 milligram versus atorvastatin 10 milligram. There was a significant reduction of the cardiovascular event with a higher dose of atorvastatin. Of course, uh, this was uh, this comes on the uh, on the expense of increase in the side effects. This is another trial comparing atorvastatin 80 milligram versus semvastatin 20 milligram. So the, these are different molecules. And it showed a significant reduction of the major adverse cardiac event, mainly through the reduction of non-fatal myocardial infarction. Again, the elevation of cardiac enzyme and uh, the level of uh, and the proportion of myalgia were higher among patients with atorvastatin. So when increasing doses of statin, we are expecting uh, that we might uh, have uh, side effects. However, if we look to the side effects here, the proportion of elevation of the uh, liver enzymes was less than 1%. The myalgia was, uh, was about 2.2%. However, the rhabdomyolysis was not different between both arms. So here, we uh, uh, take a, a synopsis of the statin trials comparing statin versus placebo and more statin versus less statin. So uh, this is the CTT meta-analysis comparing uh, a 26 trial. One arm is more statin and the other arm is placebo, less dose of statin. When uh, 
combining the five trial of more statin versus less statin, uh, this shows a clear benefit of increasing the dose of statin and comparing uh, the statin versus control in the 21 trials showed also a benefit of statin uh, over the placebo. So the end result with uh, combining 26 trials of statin showed a 22% reduction in the major adverse cardiac event with use of either statin or more dose of statin. A more, a more analysis was done for the CTT meta-analysis and there were no significant difference regarding the adverse event between the both arms. So in the CTT meta-analysis, uh, uh, there are more analysis of the low-risk patient uh, versus the high-risk patient. And if we can see here, the patient with uh, a low to moderate cardiovascular risk, statin actually achieved a benefit in this patient. So starting a statin in the patient with low to moderate risk uh, is beneficial and can lead to reduction of the major adverse cardiac events in the future. So here is another question. What if we reduce uh, the LDL more? And for, uh, to do that, uh, we have uh, studies that use non-statin molecules, such as this trial, uh, the Improve It trial, comparing a simvastatin 40 milligram uh, ezetimibe 10 milligram combination versus the simvastatin 40 milligram. This trial uh, uh, was with a seven year uh, duration of follow-up and it uh, was conducted over uh, 18,000 patients. It showed a modest reduction, a modest actually significant reduction of the cardiovascular uh, events with the simvastatin ezetimibe combination as compared with a simvastatin. Um, if we look to the level achieved in the improve it compared with other trials, uh, the level of uh, LDL in the improve it was approaching 50 milligram per deciliter. And reaching this low level achieved also a lower cardiovascular, car cardiovascular event. So reaching a lower LDL uh, is a beneficial regarding uh, reduction of the major adverse cardiac event. So other molecules were studied, which is the BCSK9 inhibitors. This is a four-year trial compared velocumab versus placebo. And if you can appreciate here, the LDL level was reduced approaching 30 milligram per deciliter in the four-year trial. And in patient with uh, high cardiovascular uh, risk and, uh, and uh, previous, cardio previous atherosclerotic events, there was a superiority of velocumab over uh, placebo regarding the reduction of the major adverse cardiac event, mainly through reduction of non-fatal myocardial infarction and non-fatal stroke. Another molecule of the BCSK9 inhibitor, which is alirocumab, was studied in the ODESI outcomes trial, and the patient on treatment uh, reached a level uh, of the LDL about 53 milligram per deciliter. Of course, the target, the target level in this uh, target LDL level in this trial was between 25 to 50 milligram per deciliter and the drug was considered to be stopped if the LDL goes below 15 milligram per deciliter. This trial was conducted in the patient with acute coronary syndrome within one to 12 months and showed also a superiority of the alirocumab over the placebo in reduction of the major adverse cardiac event. And this reduction was done through the reduction of all cause mortality myocardial infarction and, uh, re and rates of revascularization. So these trials shaped the current guidelines and this is the ACC guidelines 2019 of 
dyslipidemia, and choosing the patient uh, for the secondary prevention uh, patient, those are considered to be a very high risk patient, and the LDL reduction should be at least 50%, going to a value less than 55 milligram per deciliter. Also in the patient, with a primary prevention, if they are a very high risk, we should achieve a, a similar target value. Regarding the patients with a high risk, we should achieve at least 50% reduction of the LDL and reaching a level of the LDL less than 70 milligram per deciliter. And in the patients with a moderate risk, we should achieve a target value less than 100 milligram per deciliter. So, uh, statin also was studied in special subsets of patients. These uh, are the chronic kidney disease patients and the chronic heart failure. Regarding the chronic kidney disease, the statin in the patient uh, with hemodialysis showed no benefit over placebo. Uh, this was studied uh, using the atorvastatin in the 4D study and the rosuvastatin in the Aurora studies both showed no significant difference with placebo. However, in this another trial that studied the patient with chronic kidney disease, it involves the patient with chronic kidney disease, whether on dialysis or not, and compared the zemvastatin ezetimibe combination versus placebo, it showed a reduction of the major adverse cardiac event when using the combination of a zemvastatin ezetimibe. However, again, uh, stratifying the patient according to the GFR, when we, uh, when, when we go low uh, with the GFR and in the patient with the hemodialysis, the benefit of this combination uh, lost, was lost. So it's advised to start uh, the statin early in patient with chronic kidney disease and not uh, waiting till patient uh, achieving uh, uh, a dialysis or, uh, or reaching dialysis or reaching to a low level of uh, GFR because if we uh, have this, the patients uh, won't have a benefit regarding the use of a statin and regarding the reduction of the major adverse cardiac event. So in conclusion, statin can be beneficial in the patient with chronic kidney disease. However, it is not beneficial to be used in the patient with a hemodialysis. And again, the CTT trial uh, had a meta-analysis for the CKD patient and showed a similar result if we have in the patient with a low GFR, blue 30, the benefit of statin uh, is lost. So uh, again, the conclusion, uh, the statin is not beneficial in the patient with dialysis. What about the heart failure? Comparing the Rosuva statin uh, with the placebo in the patient of heart failure showed no benefit. So in the patient with uh, the statin has no benefit to be used in the heart failure. Again, this trial is called the Corona trial, and rosuvastatin was tried in, patient, in the older patient with heart failure. Again, it showed no benefit over placebo regarding the reduction of uh, a composite cardiovascular event. However, it showed a reduction of a hospitalization of heart failure. So, we finished this part with a statin and uh, non-statin uh, drugs for control of LDL, uh, LDL levels. And we are discussing now another part, which is the drugs for triglyceride and high density lipoprotein. We have a very uh, famous drugs, which is fibrates. Fibrates has a, a very conflicting result regarding its uh, outcome in the cardiovascular event. However, uh, I mentioned uh, this mainly trial, which is a CORD uh, trial. A CORD trial, the fibrates was tried uh, versus placebo on background of 
statin. So we have uh, one arm with a statin fibrate and the other arm with, uh, with statin. And the fibrates here showed no significant difference and no benefit uh, of uh, the fibrate statin uh, over statin alone. However, uh, a meta-analysis also uh, was done and showed that the fibrate may be beneficial in patients with a low HDL levels and the patient with a high triglyceride level regarding the reduction of the uh, major cardiovascular event. So the fibrates uh, may be considered uh, to control the triglyceride and uh, hypertriglyceridemia uh, in patient, but this should be on uh, background therapy of statin. What about another famous drug, which is N3 fatty acid or omega-3 fatty acids? Uh, it, was it was tried in several trials. Here, uh, the uh, omega-3 fatty acid was tried with this dose, which is 80, 840 milligram, uh, consisting of a fourth, uh, fourth, 460 milligram of eicosaventoic acid and 380 milligram of uh, deoxyhydronoic acid, uh, and showed uh, no significant uh, difference uh, over the placebo when testing in patients with diabetes mellitus uh, and this follow-up with a long follow-up duration actually this trial uh, showed that the N3 fatty acid was not beneficial regarding a reduction of the cardiovascular events. Again the same dose was tested in the vital trial but the population here was a healthy uh, adult Again, there was no significant improvement in the cardiovascular outcome using the N3 fatty acid with this dose. However, there is a new molecule that is introduced into uh, the market and the clinical trial, which is the ecosabentyacyl. This ecosabentyacyl is a highly profiled uh, N3 fatty acid and used with a dose of four gram daily, two gram divided into uh, two gram every 12 hours. It was tested in the reduced trial in the patient with a cardiovascular disease and diabetes uh, with other risk factors. And uh, the triglyceride level was one, from 135 to 499 milligram per deciliter. The cosabentacyl showed a significant reduction of the cardiovascular uh, adverse event in this trial and uh, it was the only uh, N3 fatty acid that is beneficial uh, till now. Here is another family uh, of uh, drugs which is the cholesterol ester transfer protein inhibitors that are used to increase the level of HDL Several trials of the cholesterol ester transfer protein uh, uh, was conducted. And uh, here in this trial, which is the Illuminate trial published in 2007, the Tolstrapib showed, uh, showed increase in the cardiovascular event when compared to placebo in the patient with a, a high cardiovascular risk. So this trial was stopped prematurely it was associated with increase in the level of hypertension, increase in the sodium uh, in this patient, increase in the aldosterone. So the drug was hazardous and uh, the, the trial was stopped. Another molecule, which is uh, Dalatrabib, tried in the uh, DAL outcomes trial, and it showed, uh, again, uh, an insignificant increase in the cardiovascular event, and the trial was terminated also. So another molecule that fails to show a benefit uh, in this uh, family. Then uh, we have the Avastrabib molecule that showed a significant increase in the HDL level together with a reduction of the LDL level. However, again, this molecule didn't achieve a better cardiovascular outcome when compared with a placebo. The last molecule in this family is the anastrabib that compared uh, with, a reveal, uh, with a placebo in the reveal trial. 
This is the only molecule that achieved a, a significant reduction of the major adverse cardiac event, mainly through the reduction of the myocardial infarction. To achieve that, we have, we have to do a, a very long follow-up of a seven-year duration. Um, however, this molecule was, uh, was drawn by uh, the company and uh, it's not, uh, it, uh, the company didn't continue the regulatory uh, process for uh, uh, marketing this molecule. So we don't have right now uh, any molecule of uh, uh, cholesterol ester transfer protein inhibitor. So we disregard the uh, treatment of HDL level elevation, uh, and we, the guidelines depend for the treatment of the hypertriglyceridemia on baseline statin as a class one indication. Based on uh, the reduced trial, we used the N3 fatty acid in the highly purified form, which is a cosabentacyl, uh, four gram per day in two divided doses. And the phenofibrate may be considered based on the data we mentioned earlier. So here is the end of the second part, which is the drugs for the hypertriglyceridemia and the HDL. Again, uh, we have a benefit with a cosabentacyl, and uh, this is my conclusion. Statin is the first line management in the hypercholesterolemia and also in the hypertriglyceridemia. Addition of non-statin drugs such as ezetimibe and the BCSK9 inhibitor are beneficial in the very high cardiac risk patients and for, uh, of course, the secondary prevention in the patient with a cardiovascular disease. And here we have an, a new drug which is a cosabentacyl that is a promising drug for the management of hypertriglyceridemia. Uh, I'd like to thank you uh, so much for uh, hearing uh, this uh, uh, presentation uh, and uh, meeting in another uh, events later. Thank you so much.